Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes with Sean, maybe 10. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about BDCs, Business Development Centers. Um, having just come back from a conference, it sounds like this is still a huge topic and something near and dear to my heart because when I started in the business, um, it wasn't a thing, right? 1998, 1999, BDCs were not a thing. If, if you did not perform the activities of a salesperson, so that's going through your list, that's asking the managers for off-lease lists, that's following up with prospects, getting referrals from other existing prospects. These are the sorts of things that were required as part of the job. And so with it, um, you know, came came a certain level of understanding that if you didn't do it, you were probably going to pack your bags. Um, fast forward to 2003, 2004, uh, started to become really heavy into internet sales and was working at a small dealership in Colorado. And really, you know, it was just two of us selling cars. We, we, we took the leads, we took the pictures. I mean, this was back with faxed internet leads still. Um, this was back when you had to upload your own photos to each individual place before a place like HomeNet came along. You know, these are the sorts of struggles that we had had. Um, and so, you know, you was part of the job selling cars. So, you know, then fast forward to 2007, my owner came to me, said he heard about this business development center. At the time, I said, look, man, we have salespeople. That's their job. If they don't do it, we need to find better salespeople. Um, and then 2013, when we started CardBiz, we actually started CardBiz um, kind of simultaneously with the, the idea of getting into the data and the vendor side. But it was also because a large dealer group here in Wisconsin wanted to kind of update or you know give a facelift to their BDC and so we went in and we tore it apart right we looked at every single thing that was going on now you have a centralized BDC as part of this discussion feeding out to 12 plus stores and so that's a lot of back and forth there's a lot of logistics that you have to consider and so the BDC was paid for appointment set at the time appointment shows and sales and here's where I'll kind of challenge you guys as managers or corporate executives or BDC agents and or managers is what exactly is the best metric to pay people on? Um, you know, we really found and, and this came to me really early in the morning and I, I wrote a whole, you know, email to the team that we were dealing with about my take on it. And my take was really turning that BDC into a into a development center. And then as soon as they develop that relationship, turning it over to a salesman to really push it over. Because what I was finding was that BDC agents who were paid for appointment shows were holding those. And if you could kind of envision me right now giving myself a hug, that is what I, I thought of every single lead. So they hold it closed. And then if that appointment doesn't come in, then they never turn it over. It never makes its way to a salesperson. And so that philosophy really didn't seem to make sense to me with today's consumers. So I, I really you know, along with my team, develop this turn process. And, you know, one of the things that, that not a lot of stores look at that all of our clients who have BDCs now look at to the best of their ability because most CRMs are not set up to see it, which is very odd, CRM companies. Anyone listening, please tell me why you show a lead total but refuse to show a contacted total. Now, I am not talking to you guys about leads that you reached out to. I'm going to assume you're running 99 to 100% on leads that you reached out to. But the contact metric, what it truly speaks to is that return engagement for the client, opening up that communication. So if you email the client and they replied, that is a contact. So if you had 100 leads in a month and you contacted 50 of them, that would give you a 50% contact rate. The reason that I developed this metric in my world was because I wanted to see where the fall down was, right? So we had a lot of people say, look, this guy, gets a, this guy sets a ton of appointments, all right? That's great. How many leads does he get? Well, he gets 100 leads, sets 50 appointments. Those are tremendous numbers. That's great. That number looks even better if you broke it down by the number of people he actually talked to. And to me, the idea of, of, of paying a BDC for set appointments is very old school. I'm sure not many of you do it anymore. 
really for me what it is is appointment show but even so if I could take it a step further and give you a quick another acronym to add to your list that we use which is called ISO or in-store opportunity and the reason that I feel it necessary to track in-store opportunities as a part of the show metric is because I could have talked to someone who just showed up and if I've talked to that customer if customer if I've influenced their visit to our lot there should be some credit there. There should be some conversation there. So that's that's something that I, I don't see enough people doing. Is, well, how, this is how many shows you have. This is how many appointments you have. Okay, well, what about previous months, right? If you do a rolling average, if you just say, look, number of people through the door, wonderful. How can they affect the sold number, BDCs? Oh, they can set quality appointments. They can bring people through the door. I agree. But how can they affect the sold number? Paying them on solds isn't fair to them, and truly it isn't fair to you. Um, and, and, and are all your BDC opportunities given to one salesperson? Is it an open floor? Are there specific salespeople? These are all the things that we tore apart and made sure that the BDC was talking with a specific list of people inside the store. We called in-store specialists who were just there to deal with incoming internet leads from the BDC at each store. And at the end of each week, they were to sit with their sales manager and go over the list of leads that were turned to them in that week talk with the manager and go over what had happened. Unfortunately, that principle really didn't catch hold, which is the worst part about it because that was, you know, your weekly catch-up meeting with your manager was just a way of life in 1998, 1999, 2000, 2003. It was just what was required. And now it is not required. BDCs are here because of lazy salespeople. Now that hurts my heart to say, but it is a reality that we all must live with. And those stores who have BDCs, managers on the desk really, really need to get on the same page as the BDC. They should be getting all of their numbers. They should be going over all of their trade appraisals. They should go over all of their appointments together. This is a together thing. So I could go on talking for days about this, but for right now, let this sit in the back of your head. What in metrics do you cover and are they the most important? Are you looking at contact metrics? Are you still paying your BDC on the number of sold units? Now, I have no problem with it being a bone for the end of the month. Hey, if, you, if this department accounts or helps attribute 100 sales to our dealership, we'll pay each agent X amount of dollars or giving them a percentage of the 100 depending on what they had. Fine, but it should not be a part of the core pay plan. The core pay plan should be hourly plus contacts plus in-store opportunities. And remember guys, BDC stands for Business Development Center. So if all your BDC is doing is taking care of incoming leads, then that is all that they are, is an incoming lead distribution center. I want to see them actually dig in and go through. If you're using any sort of lease manifest list, if you have any orphan owner list, if you're doing any data mining, companies like Auto Mastermind, Auto Alert, if you're using these firms, who is responsible for at a store level to look it over to engage it? It should be these BDCs. If you don't have enough people, then you need to relook at your situation. So remember, the BDC, I think, is necessary to some point, but will it be here forever? I'm not exactly sure. As always, I look forward to your comments. You can reach me directly, 262-278-0157. That's for phone or text. You can also email me, sean at carbizdonebetter.com. And remember, hop on the social media, take a look. The most active place I am right now is LinkedIn. So if you have anything, want to reach me directly, it would be there. The other social media sources are to stay legitimate and make sure people know what's going on in the world. All right? Any other questions, concerns, send them my way. Have a great month. Thanks. Thanks.